I think there's a severe misunderstanding of this lifestyle and being a family member to an athlete. My name is Madison Marshall. This is my Dalmatian Tux. We have been living in Europe, in Germany specifically, for the past four years for my husband's hockey career. And so I would like to talk to you a little bit more about the lifestyle, answer any questions that you have, and yeah, give you a little deep dive into what Tux and my life is like here being in a hockey family, right? I noticed when I first entered this hockey lifestyle about four years ago, I was looking all around YouTube, all around Instagram, looking for a resource to help me just navigate where do I start, where do I begin, and kind of help just be a support system for what this life is. Tux will be bopping in and out of this video, by the way. I definitely want to fill that void and be a resource for you if you are about to enter into this lifestyle with your boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, husband, wife, whatever it is, and you want to know the nitty gritty details of what it's like. I'm here for you. I am your BFF hockey wife. Let's talk about it all. First, I want to do a get to know me. What are my credentials? Basically, what is my experience in this lifestyle? My journey with my husband, boyfriend at the time, started back in 2019. My husband has been playing hockey his whole life. He played since he was three years old, up into high school, college hockey. We had met when we were in college, but we were not together at that point. My husband and I rekindled after being apart a while after college, and he had just got done playing in Europe for his first time, and was going to leave in a few months to go back to Europe. And this time he was going to Riga, Latvia, in the KHL. Dating a little bit less than a year, so I made the decision not to go with him that next year when he went to the KHL, uh, and we did long distance. So I think I have an entire video I can do just on long distance relationships in the hockey world. We were on an eight hour time difference, plus just being on literally the complete opposite side of the world had its just differences too, um, let alone the time change. But we came down to a routine. He left in July, then I went to go visit in September for a week. Went again in Thanksgiving, and then we had December, January, February, and the beginning of March. Like, totally long distance where we didn't see each other at that time. He came home for March, and then this was March 2020. So this was like right when things were starting up with the pandemic. That was a stressful time for everybody in the world. Specifically, that was stressful in the hockey industry because we weren't even sure this industry would continue on. Leagues were being canceled, games canceled, just it was everywhere. I mean, obviously hockey was not the priority at that time, of course. So we didn't have answers. Well, right after that year, Ben had a contract. It wasn't signed yet, but we basically had a feeling we knew where he was going and I was ready to take the leap with him and go with him that year and adjust my job and all of those things. So when that didn't happen, um, time was just ticking by. Like the summer was flying by and at this point, we were living in short-term rental places. So like we would rent a furnished place for three months. I was so ready to move that my apartment was gone. I was about to quit my job. It was all ready to go and then COVID hit. So we had to keep extending these short-term leases and we had no idea when we were gonna go. Um, and then finally, I ended up quitting my job because I wanted to, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna put me and my career first. I'm always gonna support Ben in his career, but right now I want a different job. So of course, right when I quit my job, I start my new one. I was one week into my new job when we got the call from Ben's agents that we would be going to Germany. And then we went to Ingolstadt, Germany. And I remember like telling my boss, I was like, you're not gonna believe this, but I have to move to Germany. I know I just started a week ago, so like, feel free to be like, yeah, we're, you're not gonna, this isn't gonna work for us. But my work at that time was so amazing. My boss was like, I'd be so mad at you if you didn't go, please go. You can continue to work from home. So that was where we started our journey together, was in Ingolstadt. Then we extended for two more years there. So we spent a total of three years in Ingolstadt, which is right outside Munich. We loved living in that region. And then after the three years, um, Ben had been injured, he had surgery, and it was time for us to move on to a different team. So then here we are now, our fourth year in Germany, we are in Schwinnigen, Germany, and our year is almost up. It is February right now, and the season has six games left. And we have re-signed, we're coming back here next year too. So that will be our fifth year in Germany. And then I count the other year prior in Riga as part of like our journey too. When I started, I was like, do I keep my job? Can I get a job when I'm there? Do I have a visa? Do I have a driver's license? Like all these questions that I just was not sure of. 
I just wanted that big sister to be there for me to help me, so that's what I'm gonna do for you. So I just wanna give a little bit of a background information on who I am. I would say I'm like almost becoming an expert in this field of hockey because of all the experiences I have gained along the way. Some amazing, some terrible. This industry is unlike anything I've ever experienced because the unknowns, the journeys, the paths are so different. It has been a lot of like learning about myself and my boundaries and also pushing myself outside of my comfort zone. Because before I entered this lifestyle, I think I was very into the idea of goal setting. And I think goal setting is incredibly important. But I had one year goals, three year goals, five year goals, and 10 year goals. And I have had to learn to very much adapt those. I still have goals for myself. But they're not so rigid, they're not so structured, they're not so, if I'm not in this place at this time, I'm disappointed. It is like more fluid. Nothing is ever guaranteed in this lifestyle and things can change so quickly. Also something that like took me a lot of time to understand is things will happen and there's simply no explanation for it, right? So like something would happen, my brain would be like, but why? Like that's not how it was supposed to go. I'm just so disappointed it was supposed to be this. And this, and there are so many different things that can come into the picture that change your route. Like it could be a new player, a new coach, a new budget. It could be injuries. It could be so many different things that it's so impossible to plan for. So you just have to know like the right amount of planning, the right amount of expectations, and also the right amount of boundaries. On the contrast, like I don't think you should settle for anything that you are not comfortable with. To know that sometimes your biggest disappointments end up being your biggest blessings and best things that could have possibly happened to you. So all that to say, there are so many different routes and journeys that you can take in this lifestyle. I plan to in this like guide on making the, your BFF hockey wife guide, I plan on talking about all things, injuries, life plans, vacations, living in Europe, moving back home for the summer, all the things that you want questions answered to, I'm here for you. I also realized I need to make this segment because I think there's a severe misunderstanding of this lifestyle and being a family member to an athlete. Um, and I basically get that because of the comments I have in my other videos I have on my account. Specifically when I do videos of the come with me to my husband's hockey game, I get so much misunderstandings on what I do and what my husband does and our dynamic and our life. But yeah, I started my own business because I like to have my own hobbies, my own business. I like making my own money. And I feel like a lot of comments, a lot of confusion is always like, you're just living off of your husband, which first of all, even if that were the case, Great, who cares? I feel like so many people judge other women and men based on that situation. If somebody decides to stay at home or take care of their kids, or if it's not about traditional like work that they just make a bunch of judgments about. I also have my own hobbies, I love making videos. I also teach yoga sculpt. And when I go home for the summer, I teach there. I think that's like one of my biggest pieces of advice, finding your own hobbies and finding your own identity in this space. Cause that can be really hard where you know, when you meet someone and they're just like, oh, you're Marshall's wife. It's like, no, my name is Madison Marshall, but thank you. I get it, by the way. If you say that to me, that's totally fine. But like, you want to have your own identity. You want to have your own personality, your own life in addition to your significant others. And I love supporting his lifestyle and I love being there for him. But yes, I have so many, you know, people in my comments that say really harsh things. And I think it's just because they don't understand, they don't get it. but. We are both working hard to make this lifestyle work. It is not just something that I'm just allowed for the ride for. I definitely put in the effort and the work, adapting to a new culture and learning languages and all of those things I take pride in. I am really excited to go on this journey with you and tell you more about it. Thank you so much for making it this far in the video. I really, really, really appreciate your support. I really appreciate you being here. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.